morning, Eric. Nice morning. To be, nice to be here with you. I was uh, mentioning you just had your general uh, annual assembly yesterday and did an extensive update on Nouveau Monde and all your various projects. Do you want to start by maybe summarizing where you, where you guys stand? Yeah, super happy that I uh, forced you to watch all our AGM and update yesterday to be ready this morning. And also uh, very fortunate to be here in a place where I work eight years, like in the Volta de Quebec. So it's a great event and thank you for inviting me. So NMG, what we're doing in a nutshell, we're developing the most advanced and largest natural graphite operation in the Western world. Uh, graphite being very important in the EV transition. For every tons of lithium that you need in the market, please, Patriot, peace, Iona, please, everybody, bring as much lithium in the supply chain because you need 1.5 tons of graphite to do the other side of the battery. So it's quite important. So that's what we're doing. So we have uh, three assets. First of all, a mine north of uh, 12 hours north of uh, Montreal in Saint Michel des Saints, very advanced. We started investing uh, in the capex and pending uh, project financing will complete in 28 months the construction of the project. We have also a second asset where most of the production of the mine will be sent into Bécancourt and call now the new Battery Valley. So that's where we'll transform the product into anode material, the specific product purchased by the uh, Panasonic of this world that we, uh, we announced already one, one large customer, which is Panasonic. And the third asset, it's the uh, the phase three. So that's our partner, Mason Graphite. We've acquired a 51% option on the uh, previous Laguerre deposit that you know very well, now called Watnan uh, Mining Project, where we're we've published a PA earlier this year at 500,000 ton per annum, being on paper the largest uh, natural graphite uh, operation being developed in the world, including China this time, bigger than China, which is, I like to say that. <laughs> that's great that's great so so how, that's obviously very ambitious like how do you go about prioritizing and yes. you risking this methodically yeah you're right so what we've done since the last few years is a phased approach so first of all if you want to be successful where china is uh, uh is since 10 years and over so they, they are ready to market today it's a hundred percent coming from China. So we needed to do a phase approach. We've invested around 125 million so far in the phase one. So we have we are currently operating a 2000 ton per annum capacity for transformation. We've uh, built uh, even a small mining uh, uh, 40,000 ton bulk sample that we're mining since 2018. So we've produced about 2000 ton of concentrate that we are now transforming, doing all the steps to make sure the Panasonic of this world and all other customer receive samples manufacture at scale, providing a quality material, a consistent product and demonstrating that we, you know, the, the cost that we are estimating is based on facts on real machines. So that's the phase approach. And now using the phase one uh, knowledge that we have, we're, we are in the process of financing the phase two, which is the, the project that will provide the profitability, hopefully by 2026, pending project financing before year end. Uh, so that's the phase two, and now we're building the phase three because, you know, the geologists were bored and needed more stuff to develop, I guess. So we're sending them to develop the, the phase three. So the phase approach is quite important. All the phases are important. Phase one, it's our business card with customer today. Phase two, obviously, is providing profitability. But phase three is very important because we're sold out on phase two in our discussion. So the customer to invest a large amount of money and to take a lot of the resource to work with us on the qualification of our product, product need to see that they have a growth plan within our company that follow their own growth plan and sell making. So the phase three is quite important today as well. Absolutely. That's going to that's gonna be the long-term future of the company once, uh, once the initial project is built. You mentioned Panasonic already a couple of times when we talked about de-risking, having that anchor customer for your for your product is uh, is a key variable you know working with many companies in the critical mineral space like financing always seems like it always hinges uh, on 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 those off takes or key customers when you're talking about the the larger uh, project financing like our, our discussions evolving with uh, with Panasonic yeah Panasonic you know Today, there's 387, last month, 387 battery plant in construction. 
yeah. Panas over one gigawatt hour, Panasonic was the first one with Tesla. So when I started the company, I thought, okay, let's start this company to feed Tesla one day, but it's Panasonic, the supplier of cell. So I guess it, it took 12 years to get to, uh, to this thing of uh, having a deal with the, the first uh, big gigafactory in North America. So Panasonic knows more than anybody what is required to, to run a large gigafactory. Only for the gigafactory in Nevada, they purchased 48,000 ton of our product. We're planning to produce 42. We're the most advanced. And, and now they're building a new plant in Kansas. And they have uh, many other, uh, they announced 200 gigawatt hour of future growth only in North America. So Panasonic is really committed to to helping their supplier getting there. So they need local supply chain. They want carbon neutrality in their supply chain. So that's for us, it's the ideal customer. It's not about only providing a, a purchase order. It's about providing resources, technical supports, and making sure that we understand what they want. And they come night and day, they are in our plan for, for weeks. We they, they introduce us into their factory as well in Osaka. So. For us, it's a transformative relationship with them. Uh, so what we, where we are now is really getting everything organized. It's not only developing the processes, it's also developing the capital market to finance that kind of project. So we need at least five years of take agreement for a significant portion of the production. We need investment from them to support the bankability of the offtake. So the, this is all things that are necessary to finance the project, and we are we are getting there. But it takes it takes months. Yeah, but it's as our chairman said yesterday. I will I will steal his quote. He said it's not about being fast; it's about being right because it's an agreement that will last for a long time. It's probably the most important uh, deal we'll ever do to finance the project. Yes, for sure. That's for sure. Um, Eric, so obviously graphite, key to battery, key to electrification, decarbonization, but not only is your product gonna help solve the, the carbon crisis, but at the same time, Nouveau Monde has taken a very different approach and a very proactive approach in terms of, you know, uh, its own ESG standards, uh, the operations of the mine is going to be all electrified. Can you can you share a bit about this uh, this approach that you're, you've been taking? Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. In 2017, we were already taking a big bet of developing a hundred thousand ton per annum flake graphite mine. When we are mining in North, in the Western world, about twenty thousand tons since a generation, and that's enough for our traditional needs. I would say. So we were already taking a bet, but the bet was if our mine is needed in the future, it means the future is all electric in 2017. It's only six years ago, but it wasn't clear yet. It, and the Tesla wasn't fully successful yet. So, so we thought, okay, so if everything goes electric, for sure, Caterpillar and Komatsu and everybody will go electric. It took us a few years to convince them, but now we're... We're getting there and we're, we have announced our definitive agreement with Caterpillar. So we're very fortunate to not have to convert ourselves the fleet. That wouldn't be uh, super uh, realistic. But now Caterpillar is not only the fleet. So all the four different, the dozer, the wheel loader, the excavator, the haul truck. Uh, I, I was fortunate to go see in T Tucson recently at their testing site, the first 793 240 tonner all electric, very impressive. And also all the charging station, the charging infrastructure, the software, and also the, the solution, they call it the job site solution, because they, they also need to demonstrate that they will make money in the future within that business, you know? So that's quite interesting to be at the forefront of this uh, change within uh, the industry of uh, how they will make money. So they will ch charge per hour. They will, they will keep the ownership of the, the fleet and they will charge per hour, but that's... Uh, that's phenomenal, the transition. So our goal is to make sure, and if anybody want to develop an all-electric mine, at the limit of what Caterpillar can say, so I, I used to say I will I will tell you everything, but now it's Caterpillar secrets as well, but we want to help as much as possible everything to be electric because there's a, a ton of graphite per, per per truck. So that's also very important for us. Yeah. If, you're, if, you're, if your mining trucks are, are using your same graphite, I'm sure that they, uh, that they will you'll pop some champagne um, Eric, uh, coming back to ESG again, so electrification of your full mining operations, the communities is also very important. 
obviously there's a first nations at both your your mining sites there's also the local communities i think you have the the, the curse of your blessing in the sense that you know Matawini is very close to Montreal, as you said, uh, very accessible all, as all access to all of the infrastructure, but it's also close to human populations and, and, and lots of uh, in those in those areas. How are, how are things progressing on the social acceptance uh, side of things? Yeah, so uh, during the development of the project, obviously it was one of the highest, uh, of the highest importance. It's to make sure we are uh, we, we have the social acceptability. And what it means, social acceptability, it's not a social unanimous. Uh, uh, everybody will like a mine in their backyard. That's not, that wasn't the goal, what wasn't the purpose. It was really to make sure that we cannot, with our judgment, see any loser in our project. Anybody that would lose uh, in our project need to be compensated properly so we acquired like we offer in a radius of one kilometer from our project any private owner the chance to sell to us so we purchased about four million of real estate this way since 2016 since the pea stage uh probably that four million now it's worth eight i don't know it's very valuable now in saint michel des saint uh however social acceptability always been very important for us and and honestly speaking i wouldn't change the deposit location by an inch it's really well located. Like it's about seven kilometers from the village on the crown lands. Yes, there are people that needed to be compensated, but overall, we are we are every survey we do, we have over 80% uh, people supporting our project. We are benefiting a lot of people. So when you're in the middle of nowhere, yeah, you, you don't bother anybody, but nobody benefits on, only the fly in, fly out people, you know. So now we we make an impact in Saint Michel des Saints. We make an impact, hopefully more and more in the future for the Manawan community. So we have a training program right on site. We were able to build a phase one plant only because we're close to infrastructure, like five kilometers from our deposit. We have a next uh, Louisiana Pacific uh, oriented strand board facility. Anybody who, who, who had visited our, our project knows that without this, we cannot build a phase one plant that is very effective, you know? So this is for us being in St. Michel des Saints is key, but uh, there's a lot of work for the industry to do uh, for all the other uh, graphite development projects that are even south from us. And that's something close to my heart. It's like we need to, be, because I, I'm living in Outaouais. Mm -hmm. So when I go in Lac Simon uh, uh, playing volleyball, I see every village have a sign, you know what? So, so we need to be better as an industry to uh, explain where we are in terms of projects where we want to go where, and we never hide the fact that we'll blast a rock we did even put uh, on our website for a while the first blast we did mm -hmm. we need to uh, to make a homage to the rock you no know, rock is beautiful and mine is beautiful so we need to make sure that we we are we are the pr agent of mining somehow yeah the right approach and what i what i take away is uh, that comment that uh, you know acceptability is not unanimity i think uh, we should uh, remember that in different areas of our policies um i think maybe ju just just to finish uh you did mention like for every ton of lithium 1.5 tons of graphite yet we've seen the markets it's been all about lithium in the past year or so graphite is relegated to the second stage i would say there's obviously less advanced projects than than, than lithium but what what do you think will uh will will uh, pricing <laughs> pricing of graphite obviously lithium now it's very uh very attractive for any investor when the price i remember in 2019 yes. companies were having difficulties in lithium it was about eight to ten thousand ton per per ton for the lithium hydroxide and carbonate that's where uh, anode material is today, but suddenly it did tenfold boom. So for sure, uh, pe the money goes where the, the the commodity price goes up. So so graphite, it's still weird, the same valuation as uh, three years ago. So we're, we, we are up and down. But when we started the campaign in 2012, if you remember, the graphite pricing was three, four times higher than what it is today. So we need better pricing. Uh, and something is weird today is a hundred percent in China. It's really a Chinese story in China. They are building capacity to feed their plant over there. Two thirds of future growth of cell making is in China. Mm -hmm. However, there's a big third now in North America and Europe who will need graphite 
and they want graphite outside China. So this is uh, what we want to provide. But in here, it's not spot price. It's long-term agreement. We need to finance projects. So we need the price to build project and the customer understands that. And we want to be the first example of much higher price than China. Great. Yeah. Well, the opportunity is clearly there. Congrats on everything you've achieved so far and uh, good luck for the future. Thanks. 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 Thank you.